Hey, it's Chris. This is gonna be such a good, such an important video today because this is the kind of information that you would wish that your parents would pass on to you to set you up to be successful in life. But I'm super excited today to pass on some knowledge, some apps, some services that can help you, yes, you, build your wealth. But first, before we get to all that, here's just a quick list of some useful money management apps, just kind of like as an appetizer. Digit is an all-in-one money management app that budgets, saves, and invests for you. Subs is a subscription tracker with notifications, with easy cancellations, with templates, and more. And don't worry, before you say it's going too fast, I'm gonna link all these up in the description. Honeydew is an app for couples to manage their money together. Loot is an app that helps you set savings goals, kind of like a digital money jar. Chronicle is a bill organizer, which helps you visualize your spending and can also help you up your credit score. And finally, there's Truebill, which helps you track your budget and your expenses, lower your bills, and cancel subscriptions. Now, I just listed off some cool, useful apps that can help you manage the money you already have, but they're not gonna help you build your wealth. Now, we're absolutely going to get to some apps and services that can help you build your wealth. But first, before we get to that, I think we need to understand what we mean when we're talking about wealth. And I actually really like the way that David Perel puts it here. You're rich when you don't have to worry about money. You're wealthy when you don't have to worry about time. So kind of the popular view of wealth is just having a lot of money, but that's not really the case. Popular investor Naval Ravikant puts it like this. The purpose of wealth is freedom. So under these definitions, wealth isn't having a certain amount of money in your bank account, $10 million or $100 million, something like that. Wealth is actually having the freedom to do what you want with your time and the ability to pursue it. So if you're rich, but you have to keep going into work so you can keep earning a salary, so you can keep making the payments on your mega mansion or your Ferrari, then you're really not wealthy because you don't have freedom of time. Still gotta go into work. So the threshold for wealth is gonna be different for different people depending on what it is that you want the freedom to do. So the person who has a sensible house and a sensible car, who has everything paid off, who isn't just buying things to try to signal their status to other people, who has the freedom to travel or to learn or to read all day, that's a person who could be considered wealthy here, whereas the person who can't stop going to work because if they do, the sports car gets repossessed isn't. So what you do want to do is pursue wealth, pursue freedom. What you don't want to do is pursue status, play status games, because like the saying goes, money talks, but wealth whispers. Now I promise we are working our way towards those apps and services that can help you build wealth. But first, just a quick little side note here, because I think it's really important, okay? And that is money does not bring happiness. So money can fix money problems, but not all problems are money problems. So if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, money can go some way towards helping you with things like safety, shelter, obviously, maybe your self-esteem, but having money isn't suddenly going to bring love into your life. It's not suddenly gonna make you moral. It's definitely not going to all of a sudden drop a purpose into your life. So if your purpose is pursuing money, then you really have to rethink things. And you know, somebody with four homes and a private jet isn't all of a sudden going to be immune from feeling sadness and pain and loneliness, right? And we all know that when somebody dies, they can't take all the goodies they've acquired over time with them, right? So it's important to just keep perspective here. Speaking of perspective, how about the view of these wallpapers here? If you haven't snagged yourself a Daily Tech wallpaper pack yet, they're linked up in the description for you, including Shades, which is our most popular pack. Hey, in just a second, we have a quick primer on how to build wealth coming up, followed by the actual apps and services that can help you build wealth. But first, amidst a storm of uncertainty in things like stocks, crypto, and real estate, it's important for investors to know what to invest in. And the truth is, the cusp of every market pullback is an opportunity to reevaluate how diversified you are, especially amongst assets that aren't very correlated to one another. You might remember that I've mentioned Masterworks before in the past, but if you haven't, I wanna take just a second 
and encourage you to learn more about investing in art. Did you know that contemporary art is one of the oldest assets and that prices outpace the S&P 500 total return by 174% from 1995 to 2020? As an asset class, it's also outperformed global equities, gold, and US housing, all while having very low correlation to any of those asset classes. Which is probably part of the reason why billionaire collectors allocate between 10 and 30% of their overall portfolio to art. Now, the usual problem is that you and I, as mom and pop investors, don't have the capital to go out and buy a Picasso. And even if we did, we wouldn't really know what to buy. Masterworks is changing the game by being the first startup to securitize a painting with the SEC, allowing people to buy shares of iconic pieces by Banksy, Andy Warhol, Keith Haring, and more, much like you were buying shares in the stock market. And results so far seem to indicate that they know what they're doing. They sold three paintings so far, and early adopters who invested in their Banksy artwork saw a 32% net return on their investment after just one year. Getting set up with Masterworks takes just a few clicks. You visit the website, create an account, browse the artwork, and then you can instantly diversify your portfolio with one of the oldest, most stable assets around. If you want to get priority access and invest in some fine art, then check out the link in the description. All right, still coming up, some amazing apps and services to help you build your wealth. But before we get there, you really do need a game plan. You have to understand wealth building in the first place. All right, now hold up. What gives me, Chris, any authority here as a non-billionaire, let's say, to talk about wealth building? Well, look, 15 years ago, I was working for somebody else. I wasn't my own boss. I owned no assets, I rented, and now I flipped all that on its head. I own my own successful business. I'm creating and acquiring assets. My net worth is rising year over year. And look, if my YouTube career dried up overnight, I'd be all right. So I'm in the process of building my own wealth and I've learned a lot from a lot of really interesting people and I really wanna share it with you. All right, so here's the relatively simple game plan, okay? You're gonna use the time that you have right now to get some money that you can invest to get some assets and you're gonna use those assets to get your freedom. Now, right now, if you don't have any extra money to invest to acquire assets in the first place, Go back and watch my five ways to earn six figures with an iPad video. If you're starting from scratch, start there because it has everything you need to start a side hustle, to be an entrepreneur with nothing but an iPad and start giving yourself a raise. But the keyword here is asset. An asset is something that earns for you while you sleep. Instead of you going out and working for money, your money is going out and working for you. So an asset is something that you buy that's gonna generate income. So what are some examples of assets? You got real estate, buildings and land, stocks, businesses, precious metals like gold, art and collectibles, intellectual property, those are a few good examples. So any resource that can be owned that will provide future economic benefits. That's what you wanna get your hands on. So it's important to note, as this tweet points out, you're not gonna be able to save your way to wealth. You have to invest. And by the way, I should just say two things here. Number one, this is not financial advice. Always do your own research. And number two, if you're getting something out of this video, hit subscribe if you haven't already for more like this. All right, finally, you made it to the payoff. Now I'm gonna share with you some apps and services that can help you build your wealth. What I love about the stuff I'm about to share with you, which I've been saving up forever, just been super excited to actually get to share with you and now I finally have the opportunity, is that you don't have to be a millionaire or an accredited investor to be able to participate or take advantage of these opportunities. So we're gonna go through a few categories here. We're gonna cover real estate, we're gonna cover businesses, we're gonna cover public market and alternative assets, all kinds of stuff, and I'm gonna link it up for you, all this stuff down in the description. All right, let's start with real estate. Real estate is rare. That makes it valuable, because there's only so much land, there's only so many buildings available. And if you thought before this that you either didn't have the knowledge or didn't have the money to invest in real estate, Think again. Fundrise is an online real estate company that lets regular, non-wealthy people buy into private commercial and residential properties by pooling resources through an investment platform. And Fundrise investor portfolios have the potential to generate dividends on a quarterly basis while the shares also grow in value over time. So there's a $10 minimum here for a starter portfolio or you can get on the basic plan for $1,000. You can also check out Ground Floor, which offers short-term high-yield real estate 
estate debt investments to the general public with a $10 minimum. And there's also arrived homes, which lets you invest in fractional shares of rental homes with as little as $100. And there's also Crowd Street, which you're gonna need a little more money for, and that's got a commercial real estate focus. Next, let's talk businesses, because businesses are valuable. Now, you could just start a business like me. That's a great way to own something valuable, or you could kind of be like a venture capitalist and invest in companies. I'll show you how in a second. Or if you're not the entrepreneurial type or you don't wanna invest in companies, but you'd rather buy a pre-existing company, I'm gonna show you how to do that too. Seed Invest lets anyone invest in the next big thing, right? So you can become an angel investor and back the newest crop of visionary startups. So Seed Invest gives you access to a curated selection of vetted startups that have already gone through a due diligence process. Similarly, Micro Ventures is a full service investment bank that offers equity crowdfunding in addition to accredited investing and secondary trading. There's WeFunder too, which is a little different because you invest in founders. So with as little as $100, you can invest in startups and small businesses and categories like technology and healthcare. And then, like I was saying, if you'd rather just buy a pre-existing, already profitable business, there's Micro Acquire, which lets you buy startups by evaluating 20 plus financial metrics. And the businesses here range in price from under $10,000 to over a million and all points in between. And there's also a service called Flippa, which sells already up and running and profitable things like blogs, Shopify stores, apps, SaaS businesses, digital services, and lots more. Hey, there's some cool stuff out there that you had no idea was available to you, right? Your mind's probably swimming with all these crazy new opportunities. We're not done yet. Next, I wanna talk about alternative investments. And of course, today's sponsor, Masterworks, offers some amazing opportunities to buy into some blue chip art, but what else is there? Rally is really cool. It's a platform for buying and selling equity shares in collectible assets. So they source, verify, and acquire noteworthy items, and then they turn those into companies and split them into equity shares, which you can purchase. So the collectibles on Rally have ranged from comics to cards to cars to important documents to even dinosaur bones. Collectible is kind of similar, but it focuses exclusively on ultra rare and iconic sports collectibles. I do also want to point out part Article collection, which lets you own, collect, and experience art masterpieces through the blockchain and through NFTs. And that brings us to our final category today, which would be stocks and crypto. Now I save this to the end because a lot of you are probably already familiar with some of the great apps here, but just to mention a few, Titan is an app that's geared towards long-term investing. The aim here is high returns over long periods of time through quality stocks that compound with an automatic hedge based on your risk tolerance. There's also, of course, Wealthfront, which pitches itself as investing that does the investing for you so you can build wealth without even thinking about it. And then there's also Betterment, which combines investing and saving. And here you can invest in retirement or you can choose from multiple portfolios to invest in. And last but not least, there's Gemini, which is a crypto exchange and also Coinbase, which will also let you invest into crypto. And just on a related note, in case you weren't aware of it, you might wanna check out my crypto course. It's called Crypto and Web3 for absolute beginners. And it's perfect for those of you who want to learn about crypto and have no idea where to start. And of course, I'll link that up for you down in the description. And for everybody who's like, well, hold on a second. Isn't this like a bear market? Aren't we headed towards a recession if we're not in one already? As Bankless's David Hoffman says, generational wealth is made in bear markets. Markets take a dip, everybody panic sells, all the rich people buy all the stuff that everybody's panic selling and hold on to it while the market recovers and the rich get richer, right? Don't be selling your assets off on the cheap. Markets like to go up, you gotta hang in there and read up, read some books on investing, right? And, and really be in this for the long term. I know that this was a longer video than normal, and even still, I didn't get to talk about all the stuff that I wish I could. I guess we'll save that for future videos. So by the way, let me know if you like this kind of a video. We mixed in some apps, we mixed in some frameworks and some knowledge, and hopefully it created kind of a unique thing here. I do just wanna end on this note. I know it can feel kind of overwhelming to just think about building your wealth. I don't know where you're starting from or thinking about getting started from, how old you are, what your background's like, 
But look at this tweet. Let this soak in because it's never too late to get started. You're not too far behind. Just take one step today and repeat that small step tomorrow and keep going and think about what you can accomplish a year from now or three years from now or five years from now. A couple years down the road, you're gonna be really glad that you started thinking about this stuff now at least, right? It's never too late to make big things happen for yourself and in your life. So keep that in mind. Make sure you get subscribed. Check out those wallpapers on the way out. This linked up down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.